Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for Grade 9 Applied students who are looking for more help as they prepare for the Math EQAO this June. This is video number 6. In these videos, we've been looking at questions from the EQAO website, and these are questions that were given for last year's Grade 9 Applied Math EQAO. Again, you can find the exact questions on this website posted here. And what I ask you to do is if you have any questions about the videos, any questions about any of the math, or if you want to request that I do more questions on a particular topic, please put those in the comment section. So here we are, we're on to question 19. It says Pablo has a cell phone. The relationship between his monthly cost, C in dollars, and the number of minutes he uses the phone, T, is represented by the equation. C equals 20 plus 0.25 T. So certainly at this point, you should be really familiar with the fact that 20 is a starting value or a flat fee. Okay, now what does that make 0.25? So again, here's the equation given to us. There are two parts to an equation. One part is the starting value or flat fee. And the other part is the rate of change or slope. The part that is attached to the variable. So in this case, the variable t has the number 0.25 attached to it. That's the slope or rate of change. The, the, the part of the equation that does not have a variable attached is the starting value or the initial fee, sometimes called a flat fee. So it looks like if this is Pablo's telephone bill or cell phone bill, that he pays a $20 flat fee plus 25 cents per minute. Now let's look at the questions. Which of the following is not true? Is it true that cost per minute is 25 cents? That is a true statement. We've already discussed that. Is it true that the rate of change is 25 cents? Yes. Slope, rate of change, cost per minute, those are all the same in this question. Is it true that the total monthly cost for one minute is $20? Well, that's not true. If I use one minute, I have to pay 25 cents plus the $20. So one minute should cost me $20 and 25 cents. So C is false. So I think my answer is C, but let's make sure that D is true. The graph of the relationship has a C intercept of 20. Well, a C intercept is the same thing as a starting value. And we know the starting value is 20. So this is a true statement. So C is the false statement. OK. Here's another equation. The equation C equals 15N plus 100. So I'm going to copy it again so I can write all over it. So starting value, initial fee of 100 slope or rate of change of 15. Let's see what these numbers mean. It represents the, to the total cost of a gym membership, where C is dollars and number of months is N. Which statement is true? Does it have an initial cost of $15? No, $15 happens over and over again. That must be the cost per month. The initial value is 100. So this is a false statement. Does it cost $115 per month? Wow, that would be expensive. Every month, $115? No, you pay $100 once, not every month. This is a false statement. Does it have an initial cost of $15 and a fee of $100 per month? Those are almost true, but they're backwards. An initial cost of $15. That's what this would be that equation. If there was an initial cost of $15 and $100 per month, it would look like this. 
So this is a false statement. So let's make sure the bottom one is true. Does it have an initial cost of 100 and a fee of $15 per month? Absolutely, the answer is D. Which statement is true? D is true. You can see when we look at the last, oops, these two questions, how important it is to understand um, equations in terms of which one is the initial or starting fee and which one is the slope or rate of change. Let's look at the next question. The following describes Ehab's drive from Windsor to Toronto. So one hour after leaving Windsor, he stops to have a snack. He drives for two more hours and then stops to visit a friend for an hour. He then completes his drive to Toronto at a faster rate than any other segment. Which graph best describes his trip? So the first thing I notice when I look at these graphs, if we've got two graphs that are kind of doing this and two graphs that are doing this. So the first thing I want to do is figure out which one, which direction makes sense so I can cross off two out of these graphs. So let's look at what this graph is. It's time versus distance from Toronto. So on these two graphs, the person starts off far away and ends up in Toronto. In this graph, the person starts off in Toronto because they're not a distance away and they drive away, so they end up somewhere else. What happens in this question? We're driving from Windsor to Toronto. So I start, or Ehab starts in Windsor, not in Toronto. But this graph says he starts in Toronto, so I need to cross it off. This graph says he starts in Toronto. So again, make sure you look at this part of the graph. It's very important. Distance from Toronto. Well, if I'm zero kilometers from Toronto, I am in Toronto. So I'm not supposed to be in Toronto. I'm supposed to be in Windsor at the start of this question. So that leaves us with only either A or B. So let's look more carefully. One hour after leaving, he stops for a snack. So here I can see he stops for a snack. And here I can see he stops for a snack. And I don't have any time references, so I don't know which one's a 15-minute snack. We'll have to figure that out. Um, then he drives for two more hours. Oh, it's okay, so we're still driving. And then he stops for one hour. So here he stops, and here he stops. But if you remember, his first stop is supposed to be shorter. So a 15 minute break followed by an hour long break. If I look at graph number B, ooh, oops, looking at graph B, you can see that this break here is longer than this break here. But that's not supposed to be true. It's supposed to be that he has a short break first and then a long break a short break, and then a long break. So I'm pretty sure my answer is going to be A, but let's keep reading and see what else we can check. After that break with his friend, he completes his drive to Toronto at a faster rate than at any other time. Well, see this little completion leg right here? That's a pretty steep line, and the steep line indicates speed. He's going fast if it's steep. Whereas here, this is a not steep line. In fact, this would be the slowest part of his journey, especially when you compare it to the first part. So B is wrong for more than one reason. So the answer must be A. Next question. Dan needs to get his car fixed. Fast Freddy charges $440 for materials plus $50 per hour. Rapid Ron charges $360 for material plus $60 for, per hour. Which repair job charges less for a five hour job and how much less? Well, we're just gonna calculate for both Fast Freddy and for Rapid Ron. Let's figure out the cost of a five hour job. So at Fast Freddy, you have to pay $4, $440 plus $50 every hour. So for a five hour job, I'm gonna do 50 times five 
is two hundred and fifty. So four hundred and forty dollars is the material. You pay that once, and then two hundred and fifty dollars because it was a five-hour job. So altogether, you have to pay Fast Freddy six hundred and ninety dollars for a five-hour repair job. Now let's do the same sort of thing for Rapid Ron. Rapid Ron charges three hundred and sixty dollars flat rate or for materials, and then sixty dollars per hour. So sixty dollars for five hours, 60 times five is gonna be $300 for the labor. And then adding together the $300 for the time plus 360 for materials give me $660. So who charges less? Rapid Ronnie. So cross this one off and cross this one off. Rapid Ronnie charges less. How much less? Well, the difference between these two numbers is $30. So Rapid Ron charges $30 less. There's your answer. Simple, just do the math. Next question. The current plan for downloading music is a flat fee of $20 plus 50 cents per download. The new plan would be a flat fee of $10 plus 50 cents per download. So I haven't really written equations, but you should still see or be aware that this number here is my starting value. It's my flat fee. And then I have a slope. So again, in the new one, let me clean that up. That got a little messy. In the new plan, the fee is only $10, but it's still 50 cents per download. Which graph represents both plans? The first thing I always like to look for is the starting value. I need a graph that has one starting value at 20 and another starting value at 10. So A has two starting values at 20, so it can't be that graph. B has a starting value at 20 and a starting value at 10. So it may be it's B. C has a starting value at 20 and a starting value at 10. So maybe it's C. D has a starting value at 20 and a starting value at zero. Well, that's not the right thing. So cross off D, cross off A, it's either B or C. So we know the starting values are correct. This one is 50 cents per download. That represents slope. This one's also 50 cents per download. Oh, they have the exact same slope. So if they have the same slope, it means that they're parallel. Here we go. This is 50 cents a download. So this is 50 cents a download. So the same slope means parallel lines. So the answer must be C. And especially if you look carefully at this new plan, this new plan is a $10 completely flat fee. You don't pay for download. You can download as much as you want, and it only ever costs you $10. And that's clearly not what the instructions said. So let's see if we have time for one more question. <clears throat> Two health clubs, Superfit and Body Plus, offer monthly memberships. The total monthly cost for each club is represented by the graphs below. Now. Whoever drew this graph would not get good marks from me because when I draw a graph, I want to see the line extend fully. So I'm going to take my ruler, just like you should on the actual EQAO, and extend those lines. Be the good math student that this person wasn't. So there are the lines extended. So now I can actually answer some questions. Now, is body plus the green line always cheaper? Well, no, here it's much more expensive. So that's not true. Is super fit always more expensive? No, again, here, super fit is cheaper. False. Super fit is cheaper if the number of visits is fewer than seven. Well, here's seven visits. Super fit is more expensive. So that's not true. Hopefully the last one's true. Body plus is more expensive if the number of visits is greater than nine. Yep, body of plus is more expensive if I'm there more than nine visits. So the answer is D. See you in the next video.